questions from the media. Um, I did want to ask you real quickly, you've been coaching for 45 years. What will you miss the most about it? And what do you think you will enjoy about what lies ahead? Well, thanks, Mike. And, and clearly the most important thing is the relationship with the, with the players and, and the coaching staff and, and others around the department every day. Um, you know, when you get a routine, uh, you know, uh, of watching film every morning and You know, going to uh, going to lunch every day. It's uh, we'll, we'll miss that. We'll miss uh, the preparation. Uh, I think the games are great, and people love the games. But I think coaches enjoy the preparation time more, uh, the practices more, trying to figure out how to uh, help the players. Uh, uh, get results that we always want. Uh, we'll miss that, and, and all that relates to people. Uh, uh, everything, everything goes back to relationships and and uh, and people. And we've been so fortunate to to be around great people and uh, people we enjoy every day. I think that's uh, again the opportunity to do this for. For uh, you know, from the time we were a player, fifty years, uh, and enjoy every day. Uh, you, know, you know, that's only only happens in fairy tales, and uh, we've been uh, afforded the opportunity to to live that fairy tale. And so we'll miss we'll miss the people, we'll miss the players, we'll miss the preparation on a daily basis. Um, but uh, again, uh, we're excited about what lies ahead, and uh, and uh, engaging uh, in other ways, and and becoming you know biggest boosters and fans of the Sooners and, and the Rebels and, and uh, you know, the Wildcats and all, the, all those people, all those, we've always followed those programs extremely well and closely and, and uh, cheered like crazy for them. And we look forward to doing that now as a, as a fan, as a fan going forward. Great, thank you, Coach. Okay, we'll uh, move to questions from our media guests now. First one will be from Ryan Haber of the Oklahoman and then Eric Bailey. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, Lon, uh, thanks for doing this and congratulations. Uh, when did you start thinking about this decision in a, in a concrete way? Uh, when did you make the final decision? What led you to that? And uh, also, uh, how did Cammy react when he told her <laughs> you were uh, going to be seeing her a little bit more? Yeah, thank, thanks. Thanks. Uh... Ryan, uh, she, um, yeah, yeah, you know, she doesn't know me for, you know, in, in uh, you know, you know, she's 19 months old, so uh, she doesn't uh, yet understand how how uh, much of a pest I will be in her life. Because, uh, yeah, it, you know what? Uh, we knew it was going to come to an end at some point. Uh, uh, we didn't expect it to be right now. Uh, but I guess, uh, quite frankly, in uh, all transparency, when Coach Hill passed, you know, a couple months ago, uh, uh, that that hit hard and. So that, that, that got Barb and I probably talking more seriously about it. And, uh, and uh, then, um, you know, we start thinking about how we want to spend, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have good health and, and um, again, enjoyed every, every day and, and uh, grandkids were a big tug, you know, no question about that. Uh, Angie and, and uh, her husband, Mike, and, uh, uh, Avery and Wyatt and Cole uh, live in Nashville, and and uh, you know, um, you know, every year they get older, we we just feel like we're missing something that we didn't want to miss anymore. Uh, Kevin and Allie in in Vegas um, with Cammy, you know, you know that's I mean, first and foremost in our agenda every day to see what we can do to engage uh, in uh, in what they're doing, um, and then Kevin, you know, getting that job in Vegas. I mean. You know what a what a blessing for him. He loves Vegas. He's got a great uh, passion for the Rebels, and uh, they're just trying to throw, you know, as a fan, you know, uh, just all of her time and interest and efforts and uh, watching and and uh, cheering on the Rebels, uh, you know. And um, we'll always, um, you know, we'll operate between Norman. We we love the people. You know, I told Joe as we talked about this. Um, you know, you know, growing up in Kansas, you know, growing up up in Oklahoma, not any difference in the type of people, and the 
and the grassroots and the foundation of those people. So, uh, so yeah, I think those um, with Coach Hill and and the grandkids and Kevin's opportunity, I think all just kind of came together at the same time, and uh, and we're we're you know as disappointed, mixed emotions, of course. As much as we'll miss, we're we're really excited about where we're at and uh, appreciative of all the all the folks have been involved and and uh, you know really really fired up about what lies ahead so it'll be great and we're looking forward to it really appreciate it lon thank you thank you hey, eric bailey tulsa world and then joe bettner eric lon, i can't wait to see how low the handicap's going to get now <laughs> airways and greens right <laughs> yeah. um you, you were at Oklahoma more than any other stop during your 35-year college career. What was so special about Oklahoma? Did you anticipate being here for a decade when you took the job back in 2011? And finally, what advice would you give to your successor about this job? Well, when, we, um, when we talked to Joe C. about um, you know, 10 years ago, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years uh, about Oklahoma. We absolutely, Barb and I knew it would be our last stop. Um, we we knew that we we had you know we you know were delight, delighted about that um, and it couldn't have worked out better. I mean the leadership here, the relationships here, the people here. Um, again, they they are what we grew up with, and uh, and the connection was was very easy because it was very genuine and very natural. And and um, uh, again, growing up in Kansas, we're just we're exactly uh, the same people. And so that that was great. It, it couldn't have worked out better. And then again, to work with the leadership of, you know, and uh, you know, President Harrows and and Joe C. and and again, thankful to to, to President Bourne for that you know endorsement and opportunity from the start. Uh, how gracious he was, in uh, throughout that process. So uh, um, we didn't know it would be ten years. We didn't know if it'd be seven or twelve or whatever when we started out. But um, it um, transpired as we couldn't have wanted more. We uh, had great players. We had uh, great staffs and people on campus and around the building at LNC are, are always kind and, and generous and supportive and couldn't have asked for more. Couldn't have asked for more. And to the next guy, um, you know, he's, he's going to be fortunate to have the same opportunity I did and to work with outstanding people. And, uh, and I know uh, Oklahoma is about, greatness and about championships and the other coaches in the program or, you know, we aspire to try to do what they've done for you know many years. And that uh, is to put successful people and teams on the floor and, and uh, you know, uh, just uh, so many people to be thankful for there as well. So the next coach will be great. I think he'll take this and, and take it to greater heights uh, because Oklahoma uh, deserves that. And, uh, and expects that in a good way, in a healthy way, and and can't wait to see who that might be. Lon, it was an honor covering you, man. Uh, best of luck in retirement, okay? Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. And let's go to Joe Bettner, Norman Transcript, and then Bob Prisbillo. Hey, Lon. Um, I, I wanted to ask you just, I know it's been a, an emotional kind of 24 hours, it seems, but or in probably longer than that, but I was wondering if you could just kind of take us how difficult it was having that conversation with this group in particular that you were going to be stepping down. I know a big senior class, but you return a lot of guys. Just how difficult was that? And just to, to kind of break that news to them. Well, that's, that's the most difficult part, uh, you know, leaving, leaving guys that you've dealt with. And I think the pandemic even, uh, you know, uh, created a different, uh, you know, uh, relationship because you're leaning on each other so much you're depending on each other you know every day always but but uh through the pandemic i mean you're i mean it's a different set of circumstances and, and the players throughout the country i thought did a terrific job of uh, managing that and dealing with it and and uh, all the uncertainties day after day uh so that's tough i mean that's really tough uh, but the guys were great the guys were absolutely great uh, they um, made us feel good, and uh, and that's a compliment to them because uh, you know uh, it's hard. It's hard, and and I told each of them. I said, you know, you guys know how great uh, University of Oklahoma is, and uh, absolutely, um, you know, 
Uh, we'll, we'll have a terrific coach uh, coming in soon. And uh, just be patient and, and trust the process and keep uh, doing great things for the Sooners. So uh, they were great, but it, but it was still, you know, that's the most difficult part. Thanks so much, Lon. It's been an honor to cover you. Thank you. Hey, Bob Chris Billow, Sooner Scoop, and then John Hoover. That helps. It's just a uh, Lon, congratulations on a tremendous career. I mean, I know we can kind of go through every single season, mention some great memories, but you got to start with the final four year. Now that you've had time, reflect back and, and things like that. How How special, how really special was that season? Well, all, all, all groups are special um, in, in different ways. Um, you, um, you know, what makes, uh, you know, that group, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, other than the wins, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the togetherness that group had, the, uh, the confidence they had in each other, the security they had to, to step out and, and uh, do individually what they could do well and expect others to take care of that same responsibility. Um, they, uh, had, they played with great joy. Yeah, they, they loved practice. They loved practice. And, uh, and it was fun to watch them grow and, and watch, you know, from, from day one, you know, and it, it started with Buddy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Isaiah, uh, you know, he and Buddy, you know, had a very healthy competition, you know, from the start. But Buddy said from day one, his senior year, um, you know, that uh, hey, we're going to the final four, you know, and, and, and you know, you look right, it's hard to go to the final four. I mean, there's so many great teams. It's hard to win tournament games. It's hard to win any games, uh, especially in the, in the Big 12. But Buddy just absolutely, you know, expected that. And, and he wasn't just saying it. And the other guys kind of bought into it and gradually you know, believed it. And they just kept getting better and better. And then uh, played, you know, unbelievable basketball you know, especially in that sweet 16 elite eight game to go to the final four and then uh, just unbelievable uh, experience. But the memories, it, it's always about memories. You want each of your teams to have special memories and uh, uh, for a lifetime. And, uh, and that team obviously afforded all Sooners and, and uh, everyone associated with a, with a lot of very good memories. So uh, that team was special. That team was special, no question about it. Appreciate it, Lon. Thank you very much. John Hoover, SI Sooners, and then Barry Trammell. Lon, uh, congratulations, and thanks so much for everything over the years, and I mean everything. Um, this story's been told before, but I'd like to revisit uh, 2011. Joe coming out to Las Vegas. You and Barb had just finished building your dream home. Moving boxes were still packed, apparently, and, and here comes this athletic director from Oklahoma. He needs a coach. He's making one last pitch. You'd already told him no once over the phone. You told him no again. Why did you finally say yes to one more rebuild? And how do you look back on that day now? As it's hard to it's hard to say why. Uh, you know, as anyone that knows Joe knows he can be pretty persistent. You know, and when he's got a plan, when he's got a vision, uh, which you know Sooners have benefited for twenty plus years uh, from that. Um, yeah, Barb and I, I think just, you know, we didn't expect to leave Vegas. Uh, we, we love the people there. We've been fortunate every stop of the way to, to you, know, you know, develop great relationships, great friendships, and, and have those to, to, to this day. So, uh, but I guess, I guess in, in the end, uh, it, uh, you, know, you know, Big 12 is, is appealing, you know. The Sooner brand, uh, we, we knew from, the Kansas State days and competing against Oklahoma, how strong that brand was. And we've learned since that it's even way more powerful than what we knew from the outside. Uh, it's it's an unbelievable worldwide brand. Uh, but um, I guess more Barb and I talked about it, um, you know, getting back to our roots in the Midwest and the Big 12 and the opportunity to, to recruit the type of people that gave us a chance to compete, you know, one more time for that final four opportunity and, and, uh, and, uh, and I, you know, we just ended up going that route and uh, no, no regrets in that for sure. As much as we, again, enjoyed Vegas and love the people there. Uh, we uh, developed that same, those same relationships here and, uh, and uh, be forever grateful to, to Joe for that and, uh, and others at Oklahoma. 
Ron, thanks and best of, best of luck to you. Thanks, John, appreciate it. Okay, Barry Trammell, the Oklahoman, and then Garen Emig. Yeah, Lon, college basketball can be a cutthroat business. It can be a sordid business. A lot of times it eats up even good people. And yet for 35 years, you've stayed above the fray in every way, from your character to your deportment to everything. Why were you able to do that? And why were you able to be so successful in a business where being either unscrupulous or just <laughs> downright mean generally gets you ahead? Um, I, I get I, I, difficult to answer because, um, I mean, uh, you know, my parents were, were, uh, uh, were all about that, uh, uh, all about uh, others, uh, doing things for others, uh, uh, making others feel good about themselves. Uh, it's always we, never I. Uh, we'd take in, uh, you know, before, you know, the day of foster kids, we'd take in, we'd, we'd have different people living with us for weeks at a time that we didn't know. <laughs> and so I think it all goes back to that. Uh, great memories, uh, unbelievable parents, uh, always about the right things. Uh, you know, oldest, oldest of six ch kids and, uh, and uh, parents were only concerned about uh, what's best for each of us. So uh, it all goes back to that as it does, uh, I guess, for a lot of us. But appreciate, uh, I guess I appreciate your question. It's a hard one to answer because the emotion involved, but uh, but uh, thanks for asking, thanks for asking. If you don't mind, Lon, tell me your parents' names. Yeah, Don and Betty, Don and Betty. Thanks, Lon. Yep, you bet. Garen Emig, Tulsa World, and then James Hale. Try to lighten the mood a little, Lon. Um, yeah, I appreciate, I'd appreciate that. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I just want it on the record now that uh, the uh, the issues the Sooners have had at Bramlage the last eight to ten years that that was a favor to the alma mater, correct? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it may look that way. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, what did we win there one time? <laughs> I think, uh, and that was a long time ago. So, uh, but uh, yeah, that's. Um, you know, number one, I think, um, you know, their, their teams have been good. Their teams have been good. And I think the job Bruce Weber did this year was maybe as good a job as anyone in the country in taking a young group, starting three freshmen. And uh, they they got really good, you know, late in the year. And that's what any coach wants to do is make progress. And, uh, and uh, the way they played Baylor in that last uh, conference tournament game showed that uh, if we were starting this thing all over, uh, They'd be competing for, you know, the top top part of the conference. So, uh, and they'll do that next year. So, uh, but again, with Bruce and and uh, you know, we're all cheering for for Scott, you know, and, and the guys at Baylor now uh, to win a national championship. But you can go down the list through all ten, you know, nine other coaches in the conference, and just be, you know, uh, amazed at how good of a job they do. And uh, that's. Uh, that, in addition to having really good players, is what makes the Big 12 so tough, you know, every night out. But, uh, yeah, happy for Bruce and, and the Wildcats and uh, always be a huge fan of theirs. And, and uh, like always, uh, you know, cheering for them every time out. Um, big picture, real quick, uh, just for old time's sake. The, uh, the, as, you, as you depart the, the game, or at least coach, from a coaching perspective, is there anything that you're – Anything that worries you about the state of the game? Is there is there anything that because I know it's it cha it's changing so rapidly, especially with players' uh, rights and, and and you know loose and transferred situations, and it you know in a lot of ways it's made the job a lot tougher for coaches. Is there anything that that are you worry is is uh, is threatening either the the sports integrity or 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 or, or moral fiber as you depart? Yeah, absolutely, uh, great worry. Uh, for the game, as great as the game is, and you'll get me on a soapbox here, but um, you know the, the NCAA, you know, has got to revamp. Period. I mean, we can't continue as we are, 
And uh, young coaches today seeing people violate the rules and nothing happened is ridiculous. And, uh, and I'm concerned about the young coaches taking that as a lead. Um, you know, um, and one of the greatest thing my dad imparted was, I mean, there's no satisfaction in cheating and winning. I mean, absolutely anyone can do that, you know. Uh, so you get me on a soapbox here and, and uh, yeah, there needs to be great changes. Uh, and, uh, and it's tough because of the you know, amateurism aspect, uh, the legal fronts, you know, what you can do. But the um, NCAA right now is um, going to a gunfight with a knife and, uh, and we're not winning. You know, so uh, love the leadership of Craig Robinson with the NABC. Uh, he's about all the right stuff. And I think he's going to bring about great change. But we need change. You know, uh, we can't we can't continue to turn our head and uh, be blind to craziness out there. And and uh, you know what's going on and uh, it needs to be changed. Yeah. Thanks, as always, Lon. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to get on that soapbox. I think more people need to do it. Okay, James Hale, KREF, and then Josh Calloway. You know, Lon, uh, I want to thank you for just working with this reporter. You came on my show quite a bit. It was always a blast, and thank you for doing that and working with me, man. Uh, one thing that I'm curious about, because when you came in and you said, come to my practice, fans come to my practice, media come to my practice, uh, I thought it was great. You know, it was... <laughs> You know, because at the time, football was shutting down. You can tell, you know, football programs don't want media around a lot. But you wanted people around with what you're doing. And I'm curious about that philosophy and why you did that when you showed up at Oklahoma and made covering your program so much fun. Well, thanks, James. Appreciate um, all your time you know, through the years. And, um, uh, you know, we, we not really ever taking ourselves too seriously about uh, what we do. Uh, we're fortunate to do what we do. There's a whole lot of people that uh, in this world that are doing things a lot more important than coaching a game. And, um, and I knew how, you know, we've always had practice open everywhere we've been. Um, but I've, uh, I see the joy that uh, dads and moms have with their sons and daughters when they come to practice and, uh, and, uh, shoot around with our players afterwards. And uh, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's just something that, you know, it's easy to do. You know, people worry about scouting report. Well, you know, there's not any secrets anymore. Every game is on television. Every, you know, coaches know everything about the other team. So it comes down to players making shots and making plays. So nothing we do in practice is going to give away any, any secrets by any means. We, uh, we uh, don't have that, uh, don't uh, have that ability to be smarter than anyone else. So, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, and I think it's great for the players. I mean, I think the players loved it. Uh, they love shooting around with, with youngsters afterwards. Um, I think fans enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's, it's always been, you know, wherever we've been, um, the program belonged to the community, belonged to the university, belonged to the former players. Uh, it's not my program. It's, 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 uh, not our coach's program. It's, it's our program, you know, community wide. And, um, it just seems natural thing to do and uh, we've enjoyed it and I think your players have enjoyed it and uh, and uh, you know as a parent I'd, I'd love to go to practice and watch my son play and right. if uh, players parents want to come I, I think that's great uh, we're not ever you know, we're going to play people that deserve to play we're right. not ever going to be influenced by what parents want or others want uh, players determine that and we've always had the confidence and security to not worry too much about what uh, folks that aren't at practice every day are thinking or wondering because they don't know, you know, what's going on. So we never worried too much about, about that. So uh, um, it's been great. We've loved, uh, I think we've developed a lot of friendships and relationships through people being at practice and, and uh, you know, Paul Armstrong, Armstrong uh, was a practice really from day one and uh, uh, in his group uh, that was there every day with uh, the Joe Bogans and Jerry Kershaw's and, and so many other so many others that again I apologize I'm going to leave out names but uh, Paul's coming out of surgery and, and recovering we uh, we wish him well we're thinking about him so that's just again it's the right thing to do and the fun thing to do and and uh, I know our players enjoyed it.
Hey, Lon, you can use my show anytime for a soapbox <laughs> if you want to get after the NCAA. I'm right there beside you, all right? So I I'll pre- let you the way. I'll throw the question I, out. You go for it, okay? I appreciate that. Keep, keep, keep up the good work. Thanks. We'll go to Josh Calloway with SI. Uh, I'm sorry. Sooner's Wire. And then we'll go to Nate Fagan. Josh? Yeah, Lon, uh, congratulations. Obviously on a fantastic career. It was a pleasure to cover your team this season. Um, just... I guess just want to ask specifically going back to kind of what President Harris was saying earlier about, you know, your favorite coach's favorite coach, just specifically the outpouring of, um, you know, just love, I guess, and respect from other coaches uh, around the country over the last 24 hours or so, you know, Mike Boyton, Bill Self, Scott Drew, a million others, just, I guess, what that means for you. Well, it's very kind and, uh, and I appreciate it a lot. And uh, I think the, you know, those in the coaching fraternity um, understand what what each other's doing every day, and and um, and um, you know, we've been you know, we've got obviously uh, so many great people and great coaches and great friends, and and we'll have those uh, forever. And competing against folks, I think, enhances the relationship. And and uh, again, we appreciate all the kind words and and the support and. Uh, and I'll be bugging them about dropping by practice, I'm sure, from time to time to, to uh, you know, uh, fill that need uh, that's going to be there going forward. So, uh, but no, it, it means a lot. Uh, again, those are great friends and, and great competitors, and, and uh, we, appreciate, we appreciate all of that. Thank you, Lon. Wish you the best. Thank you. Okay. Nate indicated that his question was just asked, so we'll go ahead to uh, Ryan Chapman with SI Sooners. Ryan. Yeah, Coach, um, we've talked a lot about your well-earned reputation as a program builder and a program rebuilder. At every stop along the way, not only have you had great success, but that success has come very early on. Can you kind of reflect back on what you and and your coaching staffs have been able to do to not just turn things around, but have that immediate impact at at every stop along the way? Well, it comes um, always back to players, Um, you know, um, Players, players get it done. Uh, I think our function in all of that is, uh, is um, you know, just whether you're a parent or a, uh, a business owner or a coach or a teacher, you know, is to, to create an environment, uh, create a culture in which players love being around. You know, if they're uh, in the office a lot, if they're coming by practice early, if they're staying late, you know, if they want to be around us, then we've got a better chance to, to teach and, uh, and uh, to listen and to learn from them. Um, and they've got a better chance then to, to realize their potential and, and do it as well as they possibly can. And that's not just on the court, but also you know, socially and in the classroom and, and in every other way. So uh, uh, I think you know, our goal is to be you know, confidence promoting all the time, never demeaning, uh, uh, you know, be you know, uh, spending time, there's no shortcut for time in anything. You, know, you can talk about what you want to do, but really you're identified with where you spend your time, you know, not necessarily your money, but your time. And our players know that uh, we've had great coaching staffs, people that are genuinely interested uh, in uh, the well-being of the student athlete, uh, again, not only on the court. And uh, when players recognize that, you know, the, the staff being all in on what's best for them, then I think you've got the best chance to, to realize as close to potential as possible. And, uh, and our staff has, has been great and our current staff has been fantastic. And, and again, just appreciate, you know, all those through the years, but uh, you know, this staff this year, uh, so, so very, very much. Thank you, Coach, congratulations. You bet, thank you. We've got time for a few more questions. If there are any, we'll go back to John Hoover for a follow-up. Yeah, Lon, I always thought it was interesting that, you know, you national player of the year, Buddy, Buddy Heald, starts out as a freshman and, you know, he works his way up and becomes, works harder than everybody else and becomes the national player of the year. A couple of years later, you got a, a lottery pick as a true freshman comes in, totally different skill set, and yet he's got the, all the headlines and all the, you know, attention that they're, what did those two, the dichotomy of those two players and their career arcs at Oklahoma, what did those teach you about yourself and how to coach players at, at this current, uh, this current time? 
Well, always, you know, every player is unique. You know, we've never compared one player to another. Uh, we, uh, you know, kind of start out with this is where we're at. And then with the player, we, we listen a lot. I, th I think listening is, is a huge, huge ingredient. Um, uh, you know, we, we ask about the player's vision, you know, what, you know, where you, you know, where you want to be, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? And, uh, uh, and then work work backwards from that. Okay, if you want to be great, you know, on the court, if you want to be great in the classroom or great at anything, you know, this uh, let's develop a plan to get there. And then you do that together. You know, everything's about shared ownership. You know, it's never my way or your way. It's always let's get this done together and make it our way. And uh, and Buddy and, and Trey were unbelievably skilled people. You know, they had different skill sets for sure. And uh, yet they were both driven to be exceptional and uh, both extremely hard workers, uh, both invested in their craft. And, uh, you, know, you know, Trey, quite frankly, probably arrived with a more complete skill set than Buddy. And uh, Buddy just kept getting better and better and better. And it was driven uh, to be great. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, Buddy was extremely smart. You know, he, uh, you know, uh, you know, as you know, turned down, you know, the early entry after his junior year and, and, and said, I, I can do better. I can I can have a better foundation and and then became player of the year and, and you know, and absolutely earned everything that that came his way. And uh, and then Trey was so skilled and with the ball so fast with the ball I and mean, people sometimes would ask, you know, how can he do all those things when he's not that athletic and I, I look at him like hey, he's faster with a ball than, than anyone else is without and uh, he's got, he had great vision and great in, uh, imagination as a passer he's a terrific passer and uh, and, and both have excelled in the NBA and uh, can be happier for them can be more proud for them you know the, uh, the the players have gone through the program before have been so so great and so supportive of each of our teams that we've had here and uh, you know the the griffin family you know i mean blake and and um, and, and taylor and, and and mom and dad and, and i mean they've been so instrumental and supportive you know throughout the process and uh, and, and in every way and, and and we'll continue to do that i mean that's the thing that when people leave oklahoma as a player you know regardless of sport i mean they, they are sooners for life and and they are appreciative and they know how special it was here. I mean, the academic assistance here, the investment in, in the student athletes, uh, in every way is, is top, top chart. And, uh, and, and I think players and student athletes come to realize that uh, you know, shortly after they're here, that this is a special place and people here are special and the leadership special. And, um, and they, they appreciate that, you know, and, and certainly Buddy and, and uh, and Trey and, and Blake and everyone else that's gone before, you know, uh, has done that. You know, at the risk of emotion, you know, Coach Tubbs. I knew better than to go there. Uh, he and his family are, are Sooner basketball. And uh, and will always be so. Uh, uh, you know, Coach uh, Tubbs jumping on board when we arrived and, and being so supportive and talking to our players and uh, uh, meant everything and 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 really really helped in the transition uh, of uh, you know when we came to Oklahoma and uh, and and uh, miss him miss him a lot Lon, well, we appreciate you so we got a couple more follow-ups here uh, let's go back to ryan aber yeah lon uh, want to ask you uh what, the, what were those conversations like yesterday with with former players i'm or and former assistants the guys that have been around the program things like that and then also uh anything that we haven't asked you about that you wanted to address <laughs> well, you guys have been helpful for sure, and I appreciate that. Uh, you know, the former, in, in the 10 years at Oklahoma, you know, at uh, 
but then the players at, at other stops. I mean, uh, I really look forward to to uh, reengaging with them more. Uh, we'll have you know certainly more time on our hands, and uh, and and say thanks to to each and every one that I can can I can reach and and um, and we'll try to reach out to all of them and uh, and. Uh, um, again, how supportive they've been, how gracious they've been, and uh, and uh, certainly it's always about players. Uh, you know, coaches just don't win without good players. I mean, all the coaches are good; they really are, and they're well prepared, and their their teams are good. So uh, it's always about players, and we've been we've been extremely blessed with uh, just terrific players and and young men, and again, players' families. I mean, it it, uh, it all goes hand in hand. So uh, yeah. So uh, it uh, it is great, and I'm going to go real quick here on Renee Forney. You know, and, uh, she along with Coach Tubbs is Sooner basketball, and uh, I uh, she does uh, she makes everyone's job so much easier and so much more enjoyable and. And her relationship with the former players and goes back a long way, as you former players know, because she'll call and get after you if you're not showing up for reunions or if you're not showing up to games. And uh, and they respond to her and uh, her heart and abilities are second to none. And uh, we uh, so appreciate uh, Renee and 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 all that all that she does and will continue to do and uh, um, in in a great way. Okay, Coach, looks like we have one more back to Barry Trammell. Yeah, Lon, I try not to get too overly emotional, but I just had one question for you. Any chance we could talk you into staying on the job? <laughs> well, I appreciate that, but, uh, and, and uh, yeah, I, I do appreciate that. And, uh, and, uh, and, and we love what we do, and we've been blessed with the opportunity to do what we love for 50 years, and uh, the timing uh, is right, and we'll be so, so engaged in, in whatever happens going forwards, and and uh, so excited about what's going to happen going forwards, because all the pieces are in place to, to you know, to take this to, uh, to uh, much greater heights, and I say pieces in terms of leadership, and and genuine people and and uh, it's a place you can recruit great players and and the big 12 conference is great and uh uh which uh, which we're, where players want to play you know, want to play against the best and that happens in the big 12 and uh so yeah we're we're excited we're we're grateful appreciative uh, uh, excited about what lies ahead and uh and and part of that excitement is uh the cheering on and supporting all those people and places where we've been and, uh, and, uh, you know, running to whatever lies ahead. But thanks. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Lon. You bet. Okay. It looks like that's all the questions we have coach. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone again for joining us on what is certainly a bittersweet day for everyone here at OU. Uh, and one final thank you and congratulations, <clears throat> excuse me, to coach Kruger. Um, we certainly wish you and Barb the best. So, um, thank you so much for everything. And thank you, everybody, again for joining us. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.